Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about rational functions. So first let's talk about what a rational function is. A rational function f of x has the form p of x over q of x, where px and qx are polynomials and q of x is not equal to zero itself. What that means is that p of x cannot just equal to the number zero itself. Now rational functions can take on a lot of forms in terms of graphing them, but two pretty common pictures look something like this. On the left, we've got a graph that splits down the middle and has opposing arrows on either side of this cross. And on the right, we have this curve that has a hole in the middle. Now, not every rational function has a graph that looks like this, but let's highlight kind of what's going on here. In the left graph, we have these dotted lines that our curve is avoiding. These dotted lines are called asymptotes. And the circle that is in the middle of our orange curve on the right here is called a hole. Asymptotes represent different types of so-called discontinuities, at which point our graph is not necessarily connected. In other words, I could not draw the graph on the left with one continuous pen stroke. I'd have to pick it up and start from somewhere else. Same thing with the graph on the right. I have to skip a point in the plane. But let's go ahead and talk about when such phenomena occur. We'll use the same setup, let f of x equal to p of x over q of x, and just assume that the picture on the upper right hand part of the screen here is just a general picture. Again, not every rational function looks exactly like this, but you gotta draw something so you can actually start filling in graphics and details more specifically. Let's first start talking about asymptotes. Now an asymptote is an imaginary line in the xy plane that our graph avoids. A vertical asymptote is one, well, that's vertical. We can see in the picture that our white graph is avoiding this blue line. But when do such vertical asymptotes happen? Well, they happen when q of x, our denominator of a rational function, takes on the value zero. Now q of x itself cannot be equal to zero as a whole, but sometimes you can evaluate certain polynomials at numbers and you get zero as an answer. The point is that your graph is trying to avoid these particular x values. And we'll start talking about that more specifically in future slides. But basically all you need to know is that vertical asymptotes happen at x values, which when evaluated at q of x, you get zero as an answer. The next kind of asymptote is called a horizontal asymptote. And this is one that is horizontal or parallel with the x-axis. Now finding these is a little bit more tricky because we need some more machinery, so to speak. So considering our polynomials p of x and q of x, let n be the degree of p of x, and let a be the leading coefficient of p of x, while also letting m be the degree of q of x, and b being the leading coefficient of q of x. If these particular definitions don't make sense, I have a video on polynomial functions that you're welcome to go watch. Now, horizontal asymptotes have one of three outcomes. If n is actually less than the number m, then the horizontal asymptote is just equal to y equals zero, which is just the x-axis. If m and n are equal, then the horizontal asymptote is equal to a over b, and if n is greater than m, then there is no horizontal asymptote. So, just to recap, if the degree of my numerator is smaller than the degree of my denominator, then my horizontal asymptote is just the x-axis. If my degrees of the numerator and the denominator of f of x match, then I simply get a over b, where a is the leading coefficient of p of x, and b is the leading coefficient of q of x. And last, if the degree of the numerator is bigger, then there is no horizontal asymptote. So that's it for asymptotes. Now let's talk about the other phenomenon that can happen, that being when holes can appear in our graph. So really, this is just a type of discontinuity that doesn't look like an asymptote. The line just continues as normal and basically just skips a point. And that skip is denoted by an open circle at that point exactly. These holes, or as some textbooks call it, removable discontinuities, occur when p of x and q of x share polynomial factors of degree one or higher. This is basically meaning that if I'm given a rational function and it simplifies, then something more than just a number is canceling from the numerator and the denominator. That something is a polynomial itself. If the polynomials that canceled have a root, then the root is going to pinpoint where these holes are going to be present. Let's look at a quick example. Let f of x equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now factor both the numerator and the denominator to get x plus 1 times x plus 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 2. Upon examination, we notice that the numerator and denominator have a factor of x plus 1. So as I simplify, I notice that the linear factor x plus 1 
cancels, leaving me with x plus 1 over x plus 2 as f of x. The linear factor x plus 1 has a root of x equaling to negative 1. Therefore, there's going to be a hole at negative 1 just because it was the factor of x plus 1 that cancelled. To find the actual point itself, I would evaluate f of x at the hole x equals negative 1, and we'll do that in a future slide. Let's look at some more examples. Here we're actually going to talk about finding the domain of rational functions. So set f of x equal to 2x plus 3 over x squared minus 4. Think of this rule of thumb. Whenever I have x's in the denominator, the denominator is at risk of being equal to 0, which is not good because we can't divide by 0. Therefore, we need to look for what values of x actually set the denominator equal to 0 so we can rule those out. So, like I just said, we will set the denominator x squared minus 4 equal to 0. Solving this, we get x squared is equal to 4, so I can take the square root of both sides to see that x is equal to plus or minus 2. This means that x equaling to negative 2 and x equaling to positive 2, if I put those into f of x, my denominator will equal 0, and we can't let that happen. So, we need to rule these out of consideration altogether. Therefore, my domain is all real numbers except for x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. So I get the interval from negative infinity to negative 2 union with negative 2 to positive 2 union with positive 2 to infinity. Notice that this union of intervals only skips over x equals positive 2 and x equals negative 2. And you're done. That would be the domain of our rational function f of x. We'll see this in a future slide, but the values x equals negative 2 and positive 2 are our discontinuities, and they help us pinpoint where our vertical asymptotes will be located. In our next example, determine the domain of the rational function g of x equals 5x minus 2 over x squared minus 4x plus 5. If I were to set the denominator x squared minus 4x plus 5 equals to 0, I would use the quadratic formula to solve and look for the solution set. When I do this, I find that I only have imaginary solutions, x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of i. What this means is that my polynomial x squared minus 4x plus 5 can be evaluated at no real number so that I get the answer of 0. This means that I actually don't have to rule anything out because I have no discontinuities in this case. Therefore, my domain would be negative infinity to infinity, so all real numbers. That also means that this rational function has no vertical asymptotes. In this next example, we're going to sketch the graph of the given rational function f of x equals to x squared plus 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. And we already saw in the previous slide that this simplifies down to x plus 1 over x plus 2, and I'm going to have a hole at the point x equals to negative 1. To find the point at which this hole lies, I need to feed negative 1 into my function. So f of x evaluated at negative 1 comes out to be 0, so I know that there is a hole at the point negative 1, 0. To find my vertical asymptotes, I look at the denominator of f of x, or rather the simplified version of f of x, and I see that by setting x plus 2 equal to 0, I get a vertical asymptote of x equals to negative 2. Looking at the original function, I see that the degree of the numerator is 2 and the degree of the denominator is 2. This means my horizontal asymptote is going to be equal to the leading coefficients of both, so I get that y is equal to 1 over 1, equaling 1 is our horizontal asymptote, which I'll draw on the graph right now. Next, I want to find my x-intercept. I want to find out where f of x is equal to 0, so it's enough to set the numerator of the entire thing equal to 0. So the numerator x plus 1 setting equal to 0 gives me a solution of x equaling to negative 1. And when I evaluate the function at negative 1, I get 0. So my point negative 1, 0 is my x-intercept. Next, to find my y-intercept, I evaluate the function f of x at 0. When I do that, I find that f of 0 is equal to 1 half, therefore the point 0, 1 half is my y-intercept. My horizontal and vertical asymptotes has sort of divided my plane into four regions. And the goal is to figure out how my graph is going to be drawn in these four regions, because my graph can't actually cross any of these lines. Now, when I try to start drawing this in, I know that I'm going to have these curve arrows that sit opposite one another, based on these horizontal and vertical asymptotes. When I say opposite, they're going to sit diagonally opposite one another. So if I'm drawing in the upper left-hand portion, I will then draw the rest in the bottom right-hand portion. 
but the thing to notice is that both my x and y intercepts are actually sitting in the bottom left hand section of these intercepts. So that's where I'm going to start drawing my graph and then the rest will come diagonally opposite. So I'll go ahead and fill in my first curve crossing the y-axis at the appropriate place and I draw my second curve opposite. But before I'm done I gotta remember that I have a hole in this graph which happens at the x-intercept. So I'm going to erase that portion of the line and draw an open circle at the hole and then I can say that I'm done graphing this function. We'll do another graphing example to wrap things up. Let f of x be equal to the rational function 3x squared minus 9x over 6x squared minus 54x. I'll want to start simplifying so I can see if I have any removable discontinuities. Doing so, I get that the numerator is equal to 3x times x minus 3 over 6x times x minus 3 times x plus 3 once I'm done factoring. Therefore, I have linear factors x minus 3 canceling from the numerator and denominator, leaving me with 3x over 6 times x plus 3. This means that I have a hole at the x value 3, so when I evaluate my function f of x at that value 3, I get that f of 3 is equal to 1 fourth, giving me that the point 3 1 fourth is going to be a hole in my graph. Now I can look for vertical asymptotes. Set the denominator 6 times x plus 3 equaling to 0, and when you solve through, you have that x equaling to negative 3 is a vertical asymptote. For finding horizontal asymptotes, notice that the degree of the numerator and denominator are both 2. Therefore, the leading coefficients, 3 and 6 respectively, give us a horizontal asymptote. I get a horizontal asymptote of y equaling to 3 over 6, which simplifies to 1 half. To find my x-intercepts, I set f of x equaling to 0, so it's enough to set the numerator equal to 0. Therefore, 3x equaling to 0 means that x equals 0, which means that the point 0, 0 is my x-intercept. Looking for a y-intercept, I simply evaluate my function f at 0 to get a value of 0 as well. Therefore, both my x and y-intercepts happen at the point 0, 0, i.e. the origin of the xy-plane. So I've got everything I need. Now all I need to do is start encoding the xy plane with this information. I'll draw my vertical asymptote at x equals 3, my horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 half, and I'll draw my x and y intercepts, which both happen at the origin. So since a point in my graph happens in the bottom right hand portion of this region divided by the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, I know the rest of my graph happens opposite that. Last thing I need to do is take into account the hole in this graph, so I erase that portion at the point 3 1 4th and I fill it in with an open circle. And now we're done.